Yaakov, no. No, no, I was looking for the one on... Uh, can't find it. There's too many good stories. <laughs> There's great stories out there. The one I'm looking for is the one about Boehner being rescued by the Democrats. I can't put my hand on it, but that's the title. Democrats to rescue Boehner. Would you believe this? You better believe it. Pope to the White House has seen once unthinkable. Michael Savage newsletter lessons from Mao's China. Pope Francis critic of capitalism's ninth, capitalism since the 1990s. And Pope Francis wrote a book in 1998 with an entire chapter focused on, quote, the limits of capitalism. Really? The limits of capitalism. Well, the church would know a lot about capitalism. It's been in the money business for thousands of years. What is this man trying to do? Why is he so dangerous? Why is there so much opposition? To this Lenin's Pope, as I call him in Government Zero. Why? Is it okay to criticize his politics? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I want to go back to Government Zero and my chapter on Lenin's Pope, because the words are so apt today as the Pope has landed in our country. Uh, it's so important you know who he is. Eight months after taking office, page 195, Pope Francis published Evangelii, Evangelii Gaudium. Evangelii, if you remember my botanical Latin. Evangelii Gaudium. An exhortation in which he makes the same spurious criticisms of capitalism that Lenin used to lead the Bolshevik Revolution. As just one example, Francis says, we can no longer trust in the unseen forces and the invisible hand of the market. Growth in justice requires more than economic growth. While presupposing such growth, it requires decisions, programs, mechanisms, and processes specifically geared to a better distribution of income, the creation of sources of employment, the creation of sources of employment, and an integral promotion of the poor, which goes beyond a simple welfare mentality. The left always talks about the free market as if it were being run by someone and income was being distributed. That's counterintuitive. By definition, a free market does not run according to a plan, and no one decides how income is distributed. Each individual decides whether to buy or sell, at what price, and at what quantity. They aren't told what to do by anyone. That's why they call it free. The Pope doesn't believe freedom works. He wants decisions, programs, mechanisms, and processes to be imposed on people. He wants income redistributed meaning forcibly taken from some people and arbitrarily handed out to others. This is just what Lenin did after the 1917 revolution in Russia. He implemented decisions, programs, mechanisms, and processes based on Karl Marx's maximum, maxim from each according to his ability to each according to his need. Guess how that worked out? Things got so bad in Russia that Lenin was in danger of being deposed by 1921. The Soviet Union survived only because Lenin's new economic policy restored some semblance of a market economy. The Soviets, the Vietnamese, and the Chinese all learned the hard way that communism doesn't work. They all abandoned it on their own after suffering miserably trying to make it work. And then I move on a few pages. I'm not going to read it all to you from Government Zero, but I want you to see where I'm going with this. I want you to see how dangerous the Pope's message is. And that is uh, this. Even Vladimir Putin admits the Soviet system was a mistake. He reminded President Obama about the horrors of communism at Davos in 09, in an attempt to dissuade Obama from pursuing his $800 billion disaster of a mortgage bailout. You hear this? Apparently, Pope Francis does want to see it repeated. Not only is he advocating thoroughly discredited socialist theories he's completely misinformed on the economic conditions he says he wants to improve he mentions inequality 11 times in his apostolic exhortation calling it quote the root of all social ills and saying it is increasingly evident he says the need to resolve the structural cause of poverty cannot be delayed he reiter reiterated this in a letter to the president of panama earlier this year there is only one problem i write by every objective measure inequality is not increasing it's decreasing 
at rates orders of magnitude greater than at any time in human history. According to The Economist, the poverty rate worldwide has been cut in half in the past 20 years. Not only has poverty decreased spectacularly, but it has done so precisely because so many countries have shifted away from the kind of socialist policies Pope Francis advocates and toward the free market system he condemns. I am not saying the Pope is evil. He probably believes the things he says, just as millions of leftist voters do. Why wouldn't he? Pope Francis was born and raised in socialist South America. He was immersed in anti-capitalist thinking his entire life. He probably believes in socialism as much as American businessmen believe in free enterprise. Page 199 of Government Zero. I'm leading up to something, by the way. And that is the religious issues and where we're going with this environmental claptrap. Remember the other day I talked about Obama's communications director, Anita Dunn? who talked glowingly about Mao Zedong, who killed 40 million Chinese with his policies. I wrote this on page 204. Watch where I'm going. Yes, she praised the same Mao Zedong who intentionally killed tens of millions of his own citizens in political purges and unintentionally killed at least 15 million more trying to implement his disastrous Marxist economic policies. Liberal politicians and media do this all the time. They correctly criticize Hitler for killing 6 million people but turn a blind eye toward the killing of tens of millions by socialist dictators. This is certainly the way Obama looks at communists, like Fidel and Raul Castro, and is likely the way Pope Francis sees them too. The Pope may not condone the oppression of the Castro regime, but he can rationalize it away as long as the regime remains committed to the quote-unquote social justice of communism. Did you catch that? As I've always said, liberalism is a mental disorder. A liberal can completely ignore crimes against humanity by a socialist dictator just because he is a socialist. And liberals will rationalize away horrific crimes committed by someone if that person shares a race or religion with others who are victims of prejudice. If a white man commits a violent crime, they want him prosecuted. If a black man commits the same crime, they want to blame white people for what the criminal did. That's exactly true racism. It is judging people not by their actions or character, but by their race or religion. And then I go on to the Pope attacks free speech. That's why I wish Lenin's Pope would spend more time condemning the jihadists, torturing and beheading Christians, instead of attacking free markets and free speech. He couldn't even bring himself to condemn the horrific murders of the Charlie Hebdo employees without making excuses for the Islamic murderers. Did you know the Pope made excuses for the Islamic murderers? I recorded it on page 206 of Zero of Government Zero. He defended them. Did you know that? He wrote this. There is a limit, he said, speaking in Italian. Every religion has its dignity. I cannot mock a religion that respects human life and the human person. If a close friend says an, a, a swear word against my mother, he's going to get a punch in the nose. One cannot provoke. One cannot insult other people's faith. One cannot make fun of faith. He was saying this after the Muslims went mad in Paris and machine gun cartoonists. You don't remember that anymore, do you? Page 206, you read that correctly. The Pope actually made excuses for the Islamo-fascist murderers, just as progressive socialists like him do at every opportunity. It would have floored me if I didn't see through this faker from the beginning. He's the perfect complement to our progressive Islamist president. Pope Francis says free speech should be limited. And one can expect to be answered with violence for saying something insulting. That's completely ridiculous, I write. The definition of free speech is the right to say controversial, even insulting things, without fearing violence, either by the government or individuals. People don't have to like what you say or agree with you. They can say insulting things back. The appropriate response is to answer them with reason or ignore them, not break into their offices and gun them down. Thomas Jefferson actually refuted the Pope directly. He wrote, the legitimate powers of government extend to such acts only as are injurious to others. But it does me no injury for my neighbor to say there are 20 gods and no God. It neither picks my pocket nor breaks my leg. Jefferson is saying something we all learn in kitten, kindergarten. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but names can never hurt me. He was talking about government power. And then I say again, this is, this is cultural. I'm not surprised at all by Pope Francis' view on how speech should be limited. He is the product of a socialist culture where stifling free speech goes hand in hand with stifling economic freedom. You can't have free speech in a socialist society. 
Too many people would start asking each other why they're working so hard and still getting poorer and poorer. Oh, I know your whole life you were told, oh, watch out for those right-wingers. Those right-wingers will take away your freedom of speech. Those right-wingers will tell you what art you can produce. Yes, all those fears were valid, but you were afraid of the wrong people. When you have a damaged optic chiasma, you see everything upside down and backwards. It's not the people who want the government to leave you alone that are the problem. It's the ones who want to help you that you should be afraid of. I know this firsthand, I write on page 207, Government Zero. I'm the only member of the American media who is not permitted to enter Britain based on statements I never even made. As I said, facts don't matter. I wasn't, it wasn't right-wingers who banned me from Britain, but Britain's wonderful, caring Labor Party government who did it. These are the great defenders of free speech. You have to read more about this in my book. The Pope promotes junk science on the issue of the climate issue, which I'll maybe pick up on Thursday. He's pushing junk science on the world. He knows nothing about the Protozoic. He doesn't know anything about the, the Ice Age. He knows nothing about warming. He doesn't know that it wasn't caused by human activity. And what never ceases to amaze me is that anyone believes the climate change narrative. When you take a step back and think about what we're asked to believe, it really is quite ridiculous. It requires us to forget the basic science we all learned in grade school. Most of us learned about the recurring ice ages that have occurred throughout Earth's history somewhere around the fifth grade. Even Hollywood stoners learned that. They were all ended by global warming, which was obviously occurring long before the Industrial Revolution. It's common sense. Even a Hollywood idiot can understand that. In fact, the first ice age occurred over two billion years ago during the Proterozoic era. As you may have surmised, the warming period that ended, it wasn't caused by human activity. It wasn't dinosaurs engaging in heavy industry either. They wouldn't exist for over a billion years themselves. The truth is that Earth has cooled and warmed in cycles during its entire existence. Technically, we are still in the last of five major ice ages in Earth's history. What most people refer to as the end of the last ice age around 10,000 years ago is really just the end of the last glacial period. The current ice age, as defined by real scientists, won't end until there is no glacial ice anywhere, including in Antarctica. You won't read that anywhere else except in my book. And I have so much more to say. I don't want to overwhelm you. It's in a very powerful chapter on the Pope's agenda, Lenin's Pope, the real agenda be behind the climate change scam and how the church is fitting in with that. It's all in my masterpiece, Government Zero, which I would implore you if you are a thinking Catholic in particular, I would actually ask you please order a copy right now from Amazon.com and give it to a skeptical friend who, who doesn't want to hear any criticism of this Pope. I think only the Catholics can save us from Catholicism at this time because they are the ones who are standing on the front lines of this insanity. To see a pope arise out of nowhere who espouses the very communistic principles that the church opposed, opposed, opposed communism. Priests died under the hands of communists. The communists burned churches, destroyed icons and artifacts in Bolshevik Russia. Wherever communism has appeared, the church has suffered. Catholics have suffered terribly. And now we awaken to a man wearing the vestments of the church, espousing the very same philosophy as those who persecuted Christians and the church. And now he's wrapping himself as an environmentalist. No, oh, beware the enemy within. He's everywhere. He's everywhere now. Just make sure he's not inside your own heart. And you have to fortify yourself with knowledge. You need, knowledge is power, and knowledge is really the only thing you have left against these con men and shysters who would steal your very freedom. Never mind your future, I'm talking about your now. They'll steal your now from you. Wait until you see what goes on over the next two days. Wait until you see all of these atheists in Hollywood and in Congress and in the media who laugh and laugh at religious people their whole lives, genuflecting and speaking in somber tones about the Pope. Wait until you see... Wait till you see them on television as their tones change. And the Pope arrives, and the Pope does this, and the Pope is walking down the aisle. And the pe Wait until you see the Pelosi's. Wait until you see the Boxers. Wait until you see the Sanders. Wait until you see them getting on their hands and knees, 
all of these wonderful religious people. Wait until you see the charade, the marching charade of Washington over the next two days. This is the Savage Nation again. I invite you, I ask you, I actually am pleading with you to read my book, Government Zero, before it's